It's championship week time. Are you in or are you out? Hopefully you're with us for this week 16 championship run. We'll be here all week helping you out. Check out the studs and the duds on today's episode. Navy Federal is proud to serve over 8 million members, including active duty military, the DOD veterans, and their families. You will receive a lifetime of membership benefits with Navy Federal, and you can easily access accounts, transfer money, pay bills, and deposit checks with the Navy Federal mobile app. Visit NavyFederal.org slash footballers for more information or call 1-888-842-6328 or download the Navy Federal Credit Union app message and data rates may apply. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, <laughs> welcome in. Oh, it's championship time. Maybe. We've still got a Monday night game, Jason. You know, that's weird because there are people out there that have not concluded the the this last week of playoffs. That's but, that's true. But we are uh, in a lot of leagues, right? I mean, we're 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 professionals. We play many many every single matchup that I'm in across the board. It's all decided already. Not a lot of people with Colts. I would say this week in yeah, your active fair. lineup if maybe you're waiting on Pascal tonight. Yeah. But otherwise, Marlon Mack. And then you you got a lot of people with Saints. Yeah, that's true. It certainly have to be a lot of Drew Brees, Michael Thomas, Alvin Kamara people out there hoping for big games <clears throat> and hoping for bad games. Well, there were a, a number of huge games this past weekend, so I think a lot of battles became decided because of some monster performances. And we'll, we put the word out there trying to get a little Monday, Punday action to get your reaction from the weekend. It was a fun one. It was interesting. There are some major implications in terms of Week 16 championship games based on injuries that took place, some playoff uh, situations going on. But uh, let's jump right in. By the way, this is a two-man band today. Huh. We're I mean, upgraded. I, I guess that's offensive to – yeah, man. Oh. I said two-man band. That's, he did say that. Okay. Yeah, so calm down. But Jason and I with you today. Let's get into uh, the most sophisticated segment of the week. <laughs> yes. Christian McChampionship. Oh, about he was so good. Odell Rectum Jr. Oh, no. That's so good. Anthony Thriller. Emmanuel Blanders. Dudu Samuel. Oh, come on. AJ Crown. So close to King. a crown, thanks to AJ Brown. Christmas Carson. Brashad Perry Christmas. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Brashad Merryman. Uh, Smile Sanders. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then more sophisticated than the rest. <laughs> yes. Poolian Edelman. Hope you didn't have Odell Rectum Jr. and oh. Poolian Edelman. They might have. They might have. We had the Odell. Odell is so attached to a three for 30. Like, that is... He, he says he's playing the last two weeks with the injury, but he just wants three catches for around 30 yards. Yeah, he's... Why not want more? Well, I... I, I it's Arizona secondary. I don't believe that that's all he wants. I actually believe that Odell Beckham is trying to do more than that. Oh, but it's not working. But he, he can't. He He's clearly... I mean, I know he's going to get the surgery. He's injured. We all know he's injured. I have been... As this entire season, uh, the the anti Odell Beckham thought he was over. <laughs> he, he garbage timed way more than I thought he did. Uh, yeah, what, he, what, he was actually eight for sixty six. Oh, good. That's like People, the best game of his year. It's, it's it's probably his third or fourth best game of the year. Man, there were some stinkers this week. Arizona is such a good matchup, and Jarvis Landry didn't get the memo. Why? There, I don't know a Jarvis rhyme, Brooks. But it belonged there. There's something. Yeah. There's something. That's on. That's on you. There's something gross that happened with Jarvis Landry. Five for twenty-three against Arizona. Of course, they gave up two touchdowns to Ricky Seals Jones. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I tried. I tried to tell the world. You that did. The seal the revenge seal game was coming back. Oh, we've got garbage Landry. Thank you, Brooks. Thank you. 
Like instead of Jarvis, see, no, I get it's it. Gar- it's garbage. Yeah, I was right. I, I understood <laughs> from the get go. I got it. <laughs> hey, you made me two bets, and they were against Brashad Perryman. <laughs> How do you feel about that I one, Cowboy? Feel bad about that one because it's not often that someone goes out and gets a hat trick. Hey, like out- number one wide receiver of the week, Brashad Perryman versus Justin Watson or Alan Hearns. I owe I owe Brashad Perryman a, a, an apology. I really do because. Um, I was not kind to him with no, my, with you my words beca- <laughs> and because now th- in my defense, that's because of a career of sucking. However, <laughs> the, he dominated this week and now there are such massive questions for week 16 championship with Brashad Perryman, with Jameis Winston. You have no weapons there. Chris Godwin went down. Looks like that's going to be pretty serious. Yeah, he's, Mike he's Evans, not playing again this year. Mike Evans is done. Scotty Miller, the guy that got in the way of superstar Justin Watson. Did you know, Brooks, th- those are all hamstring injuries? Yeah, that's wild. All three. What are they doing there? They're not drinking enough water. That's okay. my guess. All I right. think it's dehydration and um, running too fast. Someone is coming up on the sideline and just sliced in the back so of these we'll, legs. We'll talk about uh, – that's scary. We'll talk about Jameis Winston. We've got studs and stinkers on the show today and what to do because it doesn't make sense what's going on with the weapons there and people are going to have to make a Week 16 championship decision – Congratulations to all of you that did make it through this week that already know you're victorious. Thank you. Yeah, Jason made it into – we had a good week oh, as a show. Oh, man, yeah. We got to get a little toot to here because yeah. this is awesome, Foot Clan. We managed to knock off NFL Network's Adam Rank, and we are now in the championship game of League One. He put up a monster game. Do you, I don't know if you're aware of this. Every single one of his players scored a touchdown – with the sole exception of Travis Kelsey, who dominated just yeah, we, without a touchdown. And he had Lamar Jackson, and we managed to win. By what, 10? <sighs> Something like that? How good are we? <laughs> are we that good? I think we must be. Well, what about in the league where we play against Juju Smith-Schuster and, and Well, this uh, week Ninja we face Zach Efron on the Sleeper Bowl League, and that's $50,000 to charity if we win that, and we're in the championship game. What? We beat Efron? <laughs> He's so handsome. <laughs> it didn't even matter. If you got handsome points, we would lose, though. We would lose big Because I'm on the team. So it's like... Yeah, I mean, and, me he, and he's, Efron, very, he's very good looking. My wife tells me every day that I'm no Efron. Right. <laughs> Which is a weird thing it's to say when you wake up in the morning. Wake up. Hey, honey, you're no Efron. But keep but, working. But keep working. And then Mike made it to the Listener League title game, which is really good news for the Foot Clan. Because if Mike wins the Listener League, there's an extra spot. Because the winner of the Listener League stays around for next year. And Mike's on the precipice of just beating everybody. So there's that. And then, Jason, you also made it in our Dynasty League. You're in the title game going for back-to-back. If Mike wins, that would mean three of the last five years we took down the championship. Thank goodness. Yeah, you're darn Thank right. Goodness. You're darn right. Uh, yeah, and I'm I'm in on uh, in the dynasty. League. Oh, and I uh, I made the championship game in our CBS league. I'm facing Jamie Eisenberg. Many of you out there know the CBS people. It's they're amazing, and I'm gonna beat him. It's been a good season. All right, uh, reminder: find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, Instagram.com/slash Fantasy Footballers. We're with you all week long. The Fantasy Footballers.com, join the Foot.com is. Our fantasy football community. We actually just posted that video on Saturday. Nice job, Al Borland, filming, cutting that. Thank you. Also, congrats on taking credit for wrapping all of the presents that we gave away. <sighs> Shout it, out to my wife. It was, in wife. fact, your wife. You yes. took credit and we found out the truth. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I know you participated, but I wondered why they looked so professionally wrapped. Yeah, she wrapped about 10 to every one that I wrapped. Okay. Yeah, if, you, if you're not aware of what the video is... We are giving away thousands of dollars worth of sports memorabilia. Amazing stuff in there. And we haven't picked the YouTube winners yet. So if you go, uh, you know, if, if you're on the channel now, make sure you check out that video. Leave a comment, like it, share it, subscribe, and, and you can win some of this pristine auction giving away amazing stuff. Weekly Rewind. All right. It's injury news that we have to talk about. We, we mentioned uh, Chris Godwin and Scotty Miller both ruled out with a hamstring injury. Chris Godwin, you know, according to Bruce Arians, it doesn't look good. I don't expect him next week. Scotty Miller's doubtful for next week already. 
and so here you are with superstar Justin Watson needing to carry oh. an entire receiving core, oh. and o- and OJ Howard, and yeah. OJ Howard who will be targeted as will the tight uh, the tight ends on that team. Yeah, I mean uh, Cameron Bray, OJ Howard, they 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 both might be in play here with Scotty Miller out. Justin Watson, all jokes aside, I uh, he he could be in play for someone you pick up. Obviously, Bashad Perryman becomes the number one based on this last week and the injuries. This is a re uh, aggravation for Scott Miller. He was already dealing with a hamstring issue and now re-aggravated it. When that happens, it's almost a guarantee to miss the following week. So I expect them to be without Mike Evans, without Chris Godwin, without Scotty Miller, and that means it's Brashad Perryman and Justin Watson. Yeah, and O.J. Howard, Cameron Braid. I wouldn't be surprised if Ronald Jones and Peyton Barber have more receptions out of the backfield. It's going to be interesting. And then when you look at the other injury – the big one was Dalvin Cook. I mean, Dalvin Cook suffered a re-injury of the shoulder, didn't return. How is Dalvin Cook going to be remembered for fantasy purposes now? Well, I for mean, this great season, he might have cost you a title getting re-injured. Maybe, maybe. I mean, th- this will be a really interesting thing to monitor. Now, he ha- he was in great spirits on the sideline. Didn't seem like he was worried about his future or downtrodden at all. Um, we haven't he- had any updates yet come out as to what the expected timeline is. I mean, I, I'm not guaranteeing that he's out this week. He might play, but it is a re-aggravation of the same shoulder that he already re-aggravated, that he got surgery on in college. Like, this is happening over and over. And then Alexander Madison, the the league winner, if Cook goes down, was obviously already out this game. Yeah, he's got an ankle injury. So, so now Mike Boone scores. Yeah, Mike Boone, and he looked pretty good. But, of course, you, you've always and got they, the Abdul Express there. Too. They're at home, divisional game against the Vikings. Amir Abdullah probably ends up handling a ton of work along with oh, Mike Boone next they're week. They're playing the Vikings this week? That's a tough matchup. Is that what I said? Play yourself? I, That's meant, a, I meant the Packers. Divisional matchup with the Packers. There you go. It's a different team. They're that not is, playing themselves. Thankfully, it's a much easier team to run on. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see. We're going to have to make a determination based on the Cook updates, whether Madison's returning – as to where we go for the potential pivot because it could be an opportunity for somebody to get into the end zone. They smashed the Chargers this week. And Phillip Rivers, he did not look good. Philip so Rivers, Rivers' career is is on the way out ski. Phillip Rivers looked like the man that took me out of the League of Record playoffs with that interception. <laughs> he did. And I'm happy that he looked that way. Oh, come on. You don't hold grudges, right? I, it's fantasy football. You never hold a grudge. I honestly shouldn't. <laughs> you should. But shouldn't. I really do. Um, I'm definitely going to get a picture made of him for one of our bathrooms. Maybe okay. replace Greg well, Olson. I've I think been hurt. you're defining holding a grudge. I think that's what you're doing. That's right. What you do is you get a photograph printed and you put them up in, in restrooms. Right. And that's what, it. That's, that's, it. that's your how you hold a grudge. Okay. Jared Cook expected to play tonight. T.Y. Hilton, a game time decision. I didn't rank him in a way where I was going to count on him this week. Trending in the right direction, but last time he played on a game-time decision, he had very limited snaps. It's the Saints. I'm not excited. I doubt many people... Like, if you're sitting there tonight and you had... Let's say you picked up Zach Pascal because you had Hilton. Mm. So you wanted to take advantage of the situation. And both players are active. If both where players... Do you, where do you go? That's a great question. If both players are active and I've got those two, I would go T.Y. Hilton. Uh, he is the more talented guy. He will take targets away from Pascal. Pascal needs the volume. Uh, you know, he needs the ten targets to go his way. I think to end up with a solid game, and I don't think he gets those if T. Y. Hilton's taking five or six targets away. I lean Pascal myself. Well, hopefully, uh, T. Y. Hilton doesn't play. Because I don't think people out there are wanting to rely on Hilton. Yeah, more people are relying on Pascal to have a high workload. Exactly. And and uh, if, if T.Y. Hilton doesn't play, Pascal should be a pretty solid option. All right. Weekly Rewind News and Notes brought to you by the Sleeper app. Let's get into the studs. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. All right. Fortunately, fortunately if, you, if you went up against Lamar Jackson like we did, who, by the way, was amazing. We know this. We've talked about it. He's incredible. It's the year of the Lamar. But Jameis Winston 
going into this week, had been the second best quarterback over the, the last three or four weeks. He was your best shot at surviving, in you my were, opinion. I was all about him all week. You were on Sunday Live for Mike, and even without Mike Evans and with the thumb issue, you were telling everyone you absolutely have to start Jameis Winston. It, it definitely felt dicey, but I hope you did because he was pretty good. I, lo I love this. It's unbelievable how consistent he can be. Comes out, first thing he does, throws a pick. I Always. mean, it's every Get it out of the way. single Nobody's game. ever tried that strategy. I think Arians is telling him, to, at this point, that has to be coaching. Just throw it to Just the opposing team. start in a hole. I want to throw the ball more. The media is going to get you know down my back if I'm not running enough. <laughs> throw the ball to the other team. I want to start in a hole so I can play my offense. So the game script is, is po perfect for passing. Yeah. But Winston was uh, 28 for 42, 458 and 4. It's without Mike Evans. It's with uh, most of Chris Godwin, five receptions for Godwin, and then no Scotty Miller after the touchdown. He's the biggest question. We were talking about this before we turn on the microphones here. The biggest question I have this next week is uh, I have two. The two biggest questions I have is how in the world, <laughs> how in the world do you not play Jameis Winston? You, you, how in the world would you bench Jameis Winston? And then my second biggest question is how in the world can you play Jameis Winston with – no wide receivers. It's not possible for him to keep doing this, right? I think it is. I think it is, too. And it's Houston. I know. I know. I oh. mean, and it's at home. So you're playing him. I think we just decided. I think we did. I think we just figured it out. But when he just and it's, collapses and it's costs Saturday everyone too. a championship. It's prime time. Oh, man. Or not prime time, but it's the early. There's three games on Saturday this week. At least, Honestly, truly. I would want that if if I have to go with Jameis as my quarterback. The range of outcomes are so wide. I want an I want a day head start. <laughs> you know what I mean? I want to know what happened in my quarterback position before I have it doesn't to hurt. decide everything else. No. And then I mean he has Atlanta in the final week of the season. So if you go through week 17, sorry. Sorry, but you also have a decent matchup there. Patrick Mahomes, very nice game against Denver in the snow. 340 and 2. Ended Three, up a top five quarterback. 340 yards and two touchdowns in a blizzard is very impressive. Yeah, yeah. Tyreek Hill kind of helps. Travis Kelsey yeah. as well. We, we we were talking about the fact that it's really become, you know, at the beginning of the year as it was just start anyone and everyone that's a chief, and now it's just it's Kelsey, it's Tyreek. And you're going to be good with either of those two guys, but, you know. A lot of people wanted to know whether they were pivoting off of that was another Sunday Live question. Do you pivot off of Chiefs players in the snow? Not those guys. No, I was pivoting off of Broncos, but I wasn't pivoting off of Chiefs at home. Ryan Tannehill put together a wonderful game again, 279-2, and two, one pick, had a rushing touchdown, and he's leading the NFL, leading the quarterback position in yards per attempt since week nine, as tweeted by Scott Barrett. That's above Jameis. So he's not just like dumping it to Deion Lewis and waiting to see what happens. He's driving it down the field to A.J. Crown. Oh, A.J. Crown. And you how gonna, good is he? And how huge is he? He, I mean, Josh I, Allen needs an A.J. Brown on the on the Bills outside wide receiving court. I believe I a call huge him man. I call him a tank, and I just don't. I don't think that was big enough. I thought you called Derrick Henry a tank. Uh, no, no, it was A.J. Brown. It was A.J. Brown. Oh, they're both. Are they both tanks? Well, let's. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're both tankish. For okay. sure. All I'm right. gonna. I, but let me try this one on for size. Bigger and stronger than a tank. How about AJ Brown? Oh no, it's a cyber truck. Oh gosh. Yeah. No rear view mirror. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, he's great. He's been playing great, and they're putting it in his hands. Now they lost, so they're they're battling right now. They're out of the playoffs. So you like that for fantasy? You like teams that are have something to play for, and Tennessee needs to win. The nice thing and is, and they need they need Pittsburgh to lose. The Steelers lost as well, so they are you know, very much still in the picture. So this is a perfect situation um, for, you know, if you've been relying on these weapons, this is exactly what you're hoping for. Yeah. And next week it's, you know, they're at home, but it's the Saints. So we'll see what happens. Um, Saints still fighting, you know, number one seed right now in the NFC. You know who it is, right? In the NFC, yeah. the number one seed. It's the Seattle, Seattle Seahawks. Seahawks yeah. Yes. Seattle has the number one seed right now. That's no. that's pretty crazy. Also, also Carson Wentz. What? That's what the name I was oh, going to bring. Gosh, up. I don't I don't know how to describe Carson Wentz. I mean, he's been bad. Yeah. but it's not his 
fault. But, but he's been good, his, though, you know? Well, well, he's been good for fantasy and statistically, and they've won the last two games. Yeah, and they win on the last play of the game, and he puts up a nice fantasy uh, game, so he ends up being a stud. But then he looks bad for a lot of it. But, you, yeah, he kind of smells bad. But he has nobody to throw the ball to. It's really confusing. It is. Um, now you've got an unbelievable game coming up. I can't wait. The, I mean, NFL, real, not fantasy, just I can't wait for that game. And Dallas has to go on the road now to Philly. Like, if Dallas is at home with what they just did to the Rams, I would think Philadelphia has no shot. But now they're at home against Dallas. And what Dallas team shows up, I can't wait for that game. Is it right now, call it, D not even knowing the line, just an over or an under game? Is it a, is it a divisional scrap heap? It's under. Low scoring. I think it's under. I hope you're wrong. But the Philadelphia Eagles, I mean, on any given play. I mean, McLaurin. They, they made Dwayne Haskins a top 10 quarterback this week, so maybe I'm wrong. They said it couldn't be done. I know. Ryan Fitzpatrick, nice game too. All right. Before we get on to our running back uh, studs, I want to thank today's sponsor. I'm talking about Omaha Steaks. I want to thank you for the meat. I want to thank you for the meat in my thank life. You I want to meat. thank you for the meat in my freezer. I want to thank you for the meat in my belly. Right now, <laughs> Omaha Steaks has an amazing limited time holiday offer. Y'all wait for it every year. It's promo code footballers. You don't. It's not a checkout code. You go into the search bar, omahasteaks.com. You type footballers into the search bar. You will find this special deal for only $69.99. Here's what you get. Four six-ounce bacon-wrapped filet mignons. Four savory <laughs> premium pork chops, mm. four of their Omaha steak burgers, which oh are great, my. four perfectly brown potatoes au gratin, four mm. made-from-scratch mm. caramel mm. apple tartlets, mm. an Omaha mm. steak's signature seasoning pass, plus you get a free six-piece cutlery set and cutting board, all for $69.99. Well, I love well, well, how do we get there? I get it every year. Order now, and you can get the favorite gift, holiday package, plus the free six-piece cutlery set and cutting board for only $69.99. You go to omahasteaks.com and type footballers in the search bar. That's omahasteaks.com and type the code footballers. Oh, my. That sounds so good. We also want to thank Manscaped for sponsoring today's episode. Fellas, it's time to gear up. Get yourself the gift of shaving this holiday season. We're talking about the Manscaped Perfect Package. Not 1.0. Oh, not 1.5. 2.0. 2. Look, you know the people in your life, uh, they appreciate it when you are a hygienic individual. The Manscaped's Perfect Package 2.0 is the perfect gift this holiday season. It's literally everything you need to keep trimmed, cut free, and smelling nice down there, if you know what I mean. It comes with the Lawnmower 2.0. That's some proprietary advanced skin safe technology. No snagging. You don't Jason, want, no snagging. You don't want nicks. You don't want cuts. No, and That's it's waterproof. You can use it in the shower. And get this, Manscaped's products are now available at Target stores. Oh, good for you. Tis the season to Manscaped, so get yourself, your dad, your brother, your friends, the best gift of all, the Manscaped Perfect Package 2.0. Our listeners get 20% off plus free shipping when you use the code FOOTBALLERS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping when you use the code FOOTBALLERS at manscaped.com. Now let's talk about one of my all-time favorite players. He has been attached to me through good and bad. I have constantly said I don't know how to quit you even when I've been mocked because I think he's a great player. Kenyon Drake, Kenyon Great, holy moly, four touchdowns, 137 rushing yards. He was outstanding. He should have, he could have had five. They were on the goal line at the end of the game, and they, they wanted five for him. I, right after we talked about Kenyon Drake and David Johnson last week, news came out here, we're in Arizona, we see all this, we, we get the vibes for uh, management and uh, general manager Steve Kime and what's taking place here. And David Johnson's been very unhappy. And last week he caught a touchdown pass, but he only touched the ball five times. Well, right after the show, it comes out that Steve Kime is not committing to David Johnson, even coming back to Arizona next year. And then you go out and you give basically every piece of work to Kenyon Drake, who will be a free agent, who I now believe Arizona will re-sign. Someone I believe, will. I believe Kenyon Drake will be an Arizona Cardinal next year. I believe Chase Edmonds will back him up, and I believe David Johnson will be cut. And that's a sad day, right? Yes. I mean, Brooks, yes. you're nodding, it's, yeah. and you're wearing your Santa hat, we and I, it's not a jolly name. moment. Yeah, we sing his name on the show many a time. 
But I think Kenyon Drake comes back to Arizona. and Because he, he's a better fit for this system with Cliff Kingsbury than anybody else that they found. I think they went out and got him on purpose because he was a fit. Yeah. I definitely think they got him on purpose. Well, do you know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't just an yes. opportunistic thing where Kenyon Drake's on the block with Miami and we're just going to my, my – we guess, got two injuries, so we're going to add him to the roster. I think it's intentional with long-term view. Yeah, no, I, I do agree. I think they saw that David Johnson has really lost a step. They knew they needed to make a change. They probably listened to this show. Have probably. Heard me, have heard me talk about how electric Kenyon Drake is in real life. <laughs> and now, look, all he had to do was get away from Adam Gase, and he is a superstar. You mean like – um. Devontae Parker had to? Oh, yeah. Once he – he was with Adam Gase, didn't he? What about he Ryan Tannehill? Oh, yeah. He stunk with Gase. Now, Devontae Parker, by the way, wasn't in the news. For, uh, just signed a four-year extension. $40 million, Yeah, $40 million. Good for you. Good for and you. And had another monster game, which we'll talk about shortly. So, um, Christian McCaffrey? It, it's, uh, He's ten, good. Ten targets, almost 20 carries. He gets the ball infinity. Every time he touches it, he does very well. He loves to do touchdowns. <laughs> and He's a big fan of doing touchdowns. He's a big fan of doing touchdowns. <laughs> um, he, he likes doing them cool. <laughs> I mean, the truth is he's... Yeah, he's he, Christian Mick Championship. Yeah, he is the deservedly right pick at the 101 this past year. And, and next year. And next year. And he's doing it when it matters, which is every week. <laughs> I every mean, week is matters every week a lot. Matters for fantasy, but you know sometimes you get those players that they have this great season. Last last year, right? Pat Mahomes had the the most unbelievable fantasy season. You had the Pat Mahomes Tyreek Hill stack, yeah, and it was unbelievable. He was great the whole season, except week fifteen, I yeah. believe. Yeah, that's when I lost this past week. He had had a a bust game. Where all of a sudden, all of the Pat Mahomes owners were... Talking about last week? Last year. Oh, I got you. Yep. Last year, week 15. And then they were out. But Christian McCaffrey is saying, nope, hop on the back to the it, touchdown. It was a studs kind of week. Ezekiel Elliott with a monster game. Saquon Barkley finally had a humongous game. Just took the Dolphins. Just took the Dolphins. And then Chris Carson. Let's go. Oh, 24 man. for 133 and 2. Now, here's the thing. You guaranteed top five. Where's he at right now? He can't Four? be top five. I think, he, I think he's there. All right, I'm going to check. You. You, you check. We'll give credit to Miles Sanders. Miles Sanders with 19 for 122 and one. I bet you Chris Carson's right at five. I'll, I think he's outside. I think he's oh, outside, which, which is just that's hysterical. Not fair. <laughs> yes, because that's obviously not fair. When that's he's all re relative to what's around him, and you had some big games. I think it's close. But, I, but but what I'm looking at here, you know, Saquon 24 for 112 and two, He's Zeke 24 six. for one. He's six. He, who's ahead of him? Oh, Drake. Drake. Drake McCaffrey, Sanders, Elliott, and Saquon. Not if it's a. He's number one if it's a Seattle only league. That is factual. All right, Mark Ingram, nice game. Nick Chubb, bunch of big runs against Arizona. Got into the end zone. Tony Pollard, who I don't think any fantasy owner could ever play, but for the second time this year. Put up 100 in the same game that Ezekiel Elliott put up 100. So, so his, Pollard is interesting. So his, that was his second 100-yard rushing game of the season. That is now two more oh, no. than Todd Gurley and Le'Veon Bell combined. Wait, Gurley has no 100-yard on the ground games? That is correct. Based on that mathematics there? Yeah. Gurley. Um, Here's the funniest thing with Todd Gurley. Had a terribly Todd good Gurley game. Todd Gurley sucked. He had 20 yards. He had 20 rushing yards. I thought yards. it was a typo to see him in the studs, but he scored twice. Yes. He had 18 receiving yards. So collectively, could not get to 40 yards. But when you get two touchdowns, your fantasy day is safe. And Rams, everybody relying on the Rams, oh my goodness. What garbage. I no, mean, no, everybody let you down. Everybody. Goff, Cooks, not Woods, really. Cup. But then garbage time. But yes, but then garbage time happened. It's like, oh, Cup ended up fine. He got a touchdown when, and the little dump offs on the last couple drives when they didn't matter. G Gurley got two. T Goff was fine. Woods Woods was a pure bust. Woods, yeah, was, Woods a was a devastating huge, bust. Huge disappointment. Four for seventeen. But yeah, uh, garbage time is powerful. Mike Boone ended up with two touchdowns. Also had fifty six yards running. They can run the ball there. So if Madison is out again, to Mike Boone is the most trusted. Over Amir Abdullah oh, yeah. by that team. So I Boone mean, would be the pickup. We make the jokes of <laughs> Abdullah because of the Abdullah Express, but Mike Boone is definitely the guy. 
but it could be Madison. And it could be Cook, so stay tuned for tomorrow's show. And he just keeps doing it. Joseph Mixon. You love him. 25 for 136 against New England. They keep giving him the ball. The game was competitive for a while until New England defense time. But, I mean, he's been in a monster. He's, he's the RB6 since week eight on the worst team in football. That's all I'm – that shouldn't happen no. unless you're great. No, and, and not only are they a bad team, it's, it, it really shouldn't be happening because, one, they're a bad team. Two, they also have a bad offensive line. And three, he's not that involved in the passing game. Not that he's not involved, but like he's not Saquon last no. year where he's getting 10 a good targets point. every game. That was how he was saved when he was on a bad team with a bad offensive line. How Joe Mixon is constantly doing this is just superhuman. Yeah. yeah and he- what's crazy – is that he was so bad the first half of the year, averaging 36 rushing yards per game through the first seven weeks of the season. People were cutting Joe Mixon. What? How did he? I traded for him at that point in the season because it was just worth the shot, worth the shot on the talent. And I here feel, he is. I feel like, I feel like if we broke into his home, we could find the lamp. We could, we could find, and we would get our own three wishes. Because <laughs> he must have found this about week seven. So I want to. Be- I still think his ears a little deceptive. That's all I'm saying. All I right. think I, he had a, he had a couple games that were so bad that you couldn't even look at the box score without throwing up. Like when he scored, I don't know when he had like ten yards rushing, right? And he and he didn't do anything for a couple of these games, and then he just turned it on. So looking to next year, you imagine this team is going to give it to him again. Oh my gosh! What are you looking at? I, I'm I'm sorry. I was distracted by by a comment from our uh, editor in chief, Kyle the Borgogan. Um, do you know he's going to be in the championship in our Dino Junior League? I do. He uh, he's got the team with what the lowest points scored. Lowest points scored. His team is straight trash. He has Kenyon Drake, huh? Yes, Ken Kenyon. He's been riding the Kenyon Drake wave. I mean, he had Melvin Gordon go out there and put up five points. He had he had Justin Watson in his lineup, and he's is that your fault? Well, I hope so. I hope so. But Justin Watson now next week will probably be great because he's in his lineup. It, it's just to win a title. To win a title. All right, big time receiving uh, options this week. Julio, multiple touchdown. Jones, look, we got him on the phone. Yeah, we told it to him straight. And then he caught. And then he was targeted. Um, do, do you know what his target share was? I Did do, you hear about I it? I don't know the share because I don't know how percentages work. But <laughs> I do know the number, and it's unbelievable. It, yeah, his his target share was fifty one percent. So more, more than, than half, half yeah. of Matt Ryan's throws went to one guy. Uh, they also tw- won twenty targets, two touchdowns, one hundred and thirty four yards. That's how you beat Adam Rank. Thank you, Julio. Thank you, thank you. Brashad Perryman, we mentioned it, 5 for 113 and 3. Currently, Perryman's hamstring is intact and well, right? Give it a week. Uh, Jameson Crowder, the targets are going to be there for Perryman next week, 10 or more. Jameson Crowder, we saw the Thursday game, 6 for 90 and 2. It's Just a, forget about yeah, him. Pittsburgh uh, next week. Exactly. Terry Ter- McLaurin, he's so good. He is out standing and and over the last several weeks i have moved him down in my rankings week after week after week yeah the haskins effect the haskins effect and until this last week it has been good it has worked out telling people please do not start terry mclaurin uh i hope yeah. you started him but i wouldn't blame you. i wouldn't he wouldn't have been in my lineup and now now is really like okay i don't know what to do because now you've seen a little bit of connection dwayne haskins actually looked good when he got to play a a really poor defense no he's the, got giants next week and now he's got the yeah. giants so i like, think mcclaren's in your lineup probably he's got too much big playability he's done he's had those monstrous plays three or four times this year tyree kill five for 67 and two the tandem of anthony miller and Allen robinson once again, huge performances. 14 targets for Robinson, 15 targets for Miller. Kansas City next week, tough secondary, but they're at home. And but, Miller has just you're, – you're kind of riding the on-fire philosophy with both these guys. It will be very, very interesting because Kansas City, on paper, you look at it and you think this is a great matchup. Kansas City can score. You're going to need to throw the ball. And it hasn't worked out that way over the last 10, now 11 weeks. Kansas City is the number one 
worst matchup for a, for wide receivers scoring fantasy points. So yeah, it's see be what a, Car Cortland Sutton thought. Yeah, it's going to be a real push comes to shove situation when you're talking about Anthony Miller, Allen Robinson. He's got enough of a history where you just lock him in. Anthony Miller is four weeks in a row of being just a really solid option. Yeah, and I think that, again, the reason that I liked Miller heading into the Detroit game was simply due to the massive target share. And nothing about this past week changed it. 15 targets. If Kansas City can be great, but if the only players you can throw the football to are Allen Robinson and Anthony Miller, and you give them 12 targets each, I'm probably going to be happy with the result. So you're saying if Taylor Gabriel continues to be out, Correct. That Anthony Miller would be in your lineup. I think he would be. All right. Well, let me ask you this. Anthony Miller against Kansas City, Terry McLaurin against the Giants. True. So that's that's kind of a safety versus ceiling situation. Yeah. Um, Miller's been a top 12 guy now two out of three weeks. I'm going to go with Terry McLaurin. Okay. I, yeah, it's close. I, I think I want upside in my championship. Hey, Tyler Lockett's back. Eight for 120 and one on nine targets. He got word this past week that he was feeling better and was going to be used in this offense, and that means a lot to fantasy owners. It means a lot to Russell Wilson owners. Gets to play Arizona at home this coming week. That's nice. He's go for launch. Hey, 13 targets for A.J. Brown. Eight for 114 and one. Seven targets and two touchdowns for Devontae Parker. Both of those guys emerging this year and delivering in your playoffs. Yeah, week in and week out, you, you can't take them out of your lineup. Devontae Adams, hello. Nice to see you. 7 for 103 and 1. Chris Conley, 4 for 49 and 2. Mike was all over Conley as the better play out of that DD Conley stack. Now, it wasn't a you know high-volume situation, but two touchdowns is two touchdowns. And then Kenny Stills, two touchdowns that no one on this earth saw coming, but uh, well, he three wanted targets, to wait. two touchdowns. He wanted to wait until... Will Fuller was there so he could only get three targets so he could have his big game. Yeah, when no one played him. Kelsey, Kittle, Higby, Waller, Ertz, and Ricky Seals-Jones. Those are your studs at the tight end position. 17 targets for George Kittle. You remembered earlier we said Debo and Emmanuel. Terrible games. Well, that's this is where the ball went. George Kittle got everything. And, and when you look at his percentage of yardage, he was the offense and he was awesome. You still have the uh, fantasy finishes up for this week, Jason? Are you able to look at tight end? Yeah. Because I'm curious. Uh, Mark Andrews versus Higby was one of the big decisions people were making. You know, do you put Andrews out there with Lamar on Thursday, or do you roll Higby? It worked out for you in both situations. I'm just curious which guy ended up on top. Tyler Higby had 12 catches again on 14 targets, but they lost the game. So Higby, you said Higby versus uh, Mark, Mark Andrews. Andrews? Yeah. In a half-point PPR they are 11.1 fantasy points to 11.2. The dominant victory goes to Mark Andrews. Oh, see, I told you. I'm a genius. It's I'm a genius. Clearly the right My start. goodness. Where's my honorary doctorate, Brooks? Do you? Is that in the mail? No? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. If okay. any Foot Clan listener out there is thinking, you know, I am I I work at this university, and mm -hmm. this is how people that work at universities talk to um Yes. I work at this university, and I can give you an honorary doctorate. Oh yeah, um, I just want in on that. Oh yeah, you twofer? So don't uh, twofer. Mike's not here, so you and no, I. No, there's just... only two doctors here. Look, right. th it was glorious for a long time. You and I, we had check marks for being verified on Twitter. Yeah, Mike did not. That was great. That was, that was the best time of my life. I want those, a those years. I want a doctorate. <laughs> you want a doc? I do. Yes, okay. I will accept. And I would be fine if this listener wants to give Jay Grizz a doctorate as well. I don't just think that that's, that's not, not a bad idea. Not Mike. No. No, not Mike. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's move on here. Let's mm. Mm, let's get let's get depressed. Stinkers of the Week. Presented by Odor Eaters. All right. Let's look at these quarterback stinkers. Oh, my gosh. They're... There were some situations that, listen, we, we've done this for years now. And I want to be clear about this. We said, you know, we had some good weeks with some of our leagues. There is literally nothing. And, and Brooks, Al Borland, you can attest to this. There is nothing that affects us more than the advice we give and whether it comes to fruition. And we are not soothsayers. We don't know. All we can do is lay out the, the situation and tell you what we would do. And sometimes we agree and sometimes we disagree, right? I mean, 
Sometimes you would play, I don't know, Justin Watson, Jason, like for instance. Mm. And I might go like Perryman. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And we differ in our opinions. Mm-hmm. But the Aaron Rodgers situation, let's just say oh. we're on the edge of our seat because we we had made such a big deal about play, play, cut. I have never I, – I came in Sunday morning. I said uh, the only thing I care about is that we'll, we'll never have looked stupider if Aaron Rodgers has a big game. <laughs> Into the first quarter, he throws a touchdown pass, and I go, oh, my goodness. First yeah. quarter touchdown pass. What have we done? What? But that was it. That was it. That was it. 200 yards, one touchdown. That's it. That's the bust. Quarterback 20 on the week so far. Oh, there's still more quarterbacks to play. Oh, thank goodness. Thank you, Aaron, for not making us look stupid. We appreciate it. Uh, unless, you know, Well, the, unless the, someone played you. Well. They don't appreciate but it. But Yeah, but they didn't. I mean, that's fine. They went against us. Oh, so you don't mind it. No, I don't it's mind a lesson. it. Now, now I do, I do want to remind people. When I was when I was talking last week about the Minnesota championship, I was saying I I reverted to to uh, to play play bench because I want Rodgers against Minnesota. Minnesota's secondary has not been good, but we'll see. That's it's it's on the road, and Aaron Rodgers has been much better at home. You might have just better options out there than Rodgers, anyways. All right, bad games from Jimmy G. I I kind of thought he'd do well at home against Atlanta, and he did not. Two hundred and one. Um, just didn't work out. Sanders, Debo, Debo had some drops, which he's dealt with a little bit this year. Yeah, I mean Atlanta has been a, a good matchup for quarterbacks to play against, and Jimmy Garoppolo has been on fire the last several weeks. You you've got the trio of Kittle and Sanders and Debo now locked in. Everything was ripe for him at home to have a big game, so he was a huge disappointment. Yeah, that was uh, – Mike brought it up, why people feel a certain way about Jimmy G, and it's because he doesn't really give you – like he just has some dud games, yeah. some very extreme um, dud games. You know who else has some dud games? Philip Rivers. Philip Rivers has a lot of dud games. He loves taking the ball and saying, it's your team's ball now. <laughs> Do you know how many turnovers they the, the Chargers had in that game? Are you uh, aware? No. Take a guess. I don't know, five? Seven. That's a lot. They turned the ball over seven times. uh, Everybody fumbled. Yeah, Mel Mel, Mel Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon. Very nice. Seven for 28. Two fumbles lost. Yeah. You know who else stunk this week? He's not in here. But Matt Burita, real stunk. Two fumbles on four carries. Now That's That's bad, bad. That's Raheem Mostert is locked and loaded next week. That's hard to do. To fumble twice... When you only get four opportunities, Melvin to not tried. Fumble. I mean, he had seven tries and he fumbled twice. So. Yeah, that was bad. Uh, but nobody's starting burrito. At least Melvin Gordon that that wrecked you. You just forgive and forget the situation for Melvin. He's got Oakland next week. He he got the uh, honorary benching for a while. You saw a lot of Justin Jackson come in. You did. But then he did get back in later in the game. So I, I think they'll just, you know, they're moving on. They know Melvin Gordon is not a guy that just fumbles every time he touches the ball. All right, and then Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry was out a lot of this game dealing with a hamstring injury. You're going to need to monitor that this week. It's amazing that 21 for 86 with no catches was, you know. It's a dud. Yeah, it is. It for what feels, you needed. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it feels like he was okay. I mean, got a bunch of carries, 86 rushing Came back yards. in the game, right? Yeah, did come back in the game late. So, you know, the, the reality is, and this is, this is the problem with Derrick Henry. 86 rushing yards is really good in general. You go and look at the studs of the week, and a lot of them had around 80 rushing yards, and then they added 40 receiving yards or something like that. But he doesn't catch the ball much. Yeah, I mean, I I don't really care. No, no, no. Because he just didn't score. Exactly. If you don't score when you're Derrick Henry, then you're a dud game because – you just don't add enough in the passing game to be able to have the, the floor high enough. Dudrick Henry? Is that what you said? Oh, that, that's, what, I, that's what Mike – if he I, was here, Mike would have said that. I would have I I accepted that. Yeah. Dudrick Le- Henry. Uh, Leonard Fournette, 15 for 42. Yeah. Now Not he good. Gets, he, now he's, he's usually uh, immune to this. Tw- 20 touches. Seven targets, five receptions. So if you are in a full PPR league – you were okay, but certainly disappointed, especially in a very winnable matchup 
uh, at Oakland. This is now a couple games in a row that Leonard Fournette has just kind of stunk after he seemed so consistent. I thought Devin Singletary looked good. Oh, he looked great. But for fantasy purposes, he was single-digit guy. I mean, he had two catches he, for two yards. He fumbled. He had another fumble they didn't lose. He he has Derrick Henry's line. Like, Derrick Henry was 21 for 86. Devin Singletary, the exact opposite body type, was 21 carries for 87 yards. So he's one yard better than Derrick Henry. Yeah, and then um, I feel like at this point, Philip Lindsay's done in your lineup because there's been multiple matchups in a row where you thought Philip Lindsay was going to be something, Jason. I, yeah, I get it, but I, I don't, I don't. He plays Detroit next week. I don't think he's done because of that. I think you're not you, willing to let him go. You're you're probably not in the title game, so you don't have to think about it because Philip Lindsay let you down. There are enough listeners. Jason yeah. was catching a piece of fuzz. And and for those it. of you listening at home. He paused to catch a piece of fuzz that was floating in the air like a wisp. That's called. Did good, you make a wish? Good audio. I wished to be as good as Joe Mixon okay. at running the ball. All right, Philip Lindsay wished that as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this was absolutely mondo turd. Seven for thirty-two. Now it is in the snow. Do you forgive him? Yes, I forgive him because Detroit will forgive him. I mean, Are you sure? Yes. You're positive. I am positive. Dare, uh, yes, Philip Lindsay will be a fine play okay. this week Philip Lindsay against Detroit. was supposed to be a fine play against Minnesota, Buffalo, the Chargers, and Houston. And he was a fine play in one of those. Sort of. I mean, yes. Houston was supposed to be a smash play. I'm just disappointed. As soon as it was kind of like, hey, people aren't paying attention to Philip Lindsay, he's like, this is why. And then David Meh, Gummery, 14 yeah. for 39. Yeah. You saw this coming. Oh, yeah. Every single Sunday Live question with David Montgomery I was trying to pivot from. Those are the best. Like, the, the best are when there's an easy and obvious answer that a lot of people have. Like, a lot of people didn't know what to do with David Montgomery, and that one was like, oh, that's easy. You don't play him. Ronald Jones, Peyton Barber, both disappointing. Every time they got the ball, it seemed like it was a cursory, like I need to check the box of running so that I can throw with Jameis more. And uh, they were both Pretty disappointing. LaShawn McCoy, Darwin Thompson to speak to the Lindsay matchup. Nobody ran the ball well in that game. Although Darwin did have more work than we've seen in the past. So yeah. it's kind of interesting. Well, and the, he was much better with the work he had than LaShawn McCoy was. Do you know LaShawn McCoy was late to the game? Oh, come on. I believe it, though. They, what, because of the snow? Yeah, because of the snow. There were three players that were, were a little late. I it, uh. Yeah. I'm just saying, maybe okay. I don't know if that factored in, but I mean, it's, it's pretty tough in the snow, man. It's just it is a fact that he was like, all right, tell me how this happened, Brooks. We've got uh wide receiver duds. You had what 44 points scored by Dallas. Was that their final total? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, Amari Cooper had one catch. Michael Gallup had one catch. Five targets combined between the two. Uh, So that's that's um that here, shouldn't be able to happen. Here's the cool thing. Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup. And Randall Cobb, they combined, the three of them, in a game where the Cowboys scored over 40 points for 22 yards. 22 receiving yards between your first, second, and third receivers. And that's all thanks to Randall Cobb's negative three total yards. They just ran the football. Go with Gallup's six. I mean, even Cooper's. Dak. Dak, you'd expect more than 202 from so, Dak. So, you know, it's like we played Amari Cooper. And we played him over Devontae Parker. And, yeah, it was and dumb. That felt bad. We we still got the W. We, it could have been a capital W, but it was just a lowercase W. W is a W. Um, but now, that and it, it felt bad, and now it's like, okay, I don't know if we can stick with Cooper. But looking at this now, Cooper dominated. 19 yards, I mean. Um, amongst the other wideouts? You compare that to <laughs> Gallup and Cobb, who combined for three yards. Cooper was fantastic. Look, you can throw on Philadelphia. It's hard. It's going to be hard not to start these guys, Cooper and Gallup, in Philadelphia, where Dallas won't necessarily be able to just you know forty five rushing attempts this game, and a dominating halftime lead twenty eight to seven. Two after. running backs with a hundred plus rushing yards. Yeah. yeah, but I it does show you that if the game plan goes the way Dallas wants it to, Dak's not throwing for three hundred or four hundred. He's throwing for two hundred. Edelman two for nine on five targets. This was a very late rankings pivot for me because more and more news, Edelman starting to equivocate on whether he was going to play in this game. 
thinks he can give it a go type of news. Cincinnati's been better on defense. Edelman banged up. I'm not saying that you benched him. I mean, you probably didn't. Almost nobody did. But he had one of the biggest duds of the year, and he's been the, one of the more consistent players in all of fantasy. Yeah, it'll, so, I mean, it'll... he had averaged 16.4 fantasy points per game over the last nine, and this was a pure – it was basically like you didn't play a wide receiver. Yeah, I was going to say, you, this is one where you have to pay attention to the Edelman news. He's going to miss practice this week, but late in the week, the Thursday, the Friday, how involved is he? Is he, you know, healing up better? Because if he's as injured as he was this game – it's going to be really hard to trust him in your championship. Speaking of trust, I mean, what do you do with Kenny Galladay oh, in that. Denver next week with David Blau, who, uh, I mean, it was not smooth for Galladay. It was whatever the opposite of smooth is. Seven you, targets, three for 44. You cannot trust Galladay next week. He was my start of the week this week. Ugh. Clearly a, a smash play where you knew they were going to have to throw the ball, and it was against Tampa Bay, who is not is not close to the worst. They are by um, they are to the wide receiver position what the Arizona Cardinals are to the tight end position this year. And so the fact that he couldn't get it done and what really sucked is at the end of that game there were a couple of bomb throws to Galladay, the one in particular where it was it had to be a 40-yard throw, and it went right through his hands. So it was a bad game. I apologize. It just it, – And he should the, too. The process made sense. But the result three made for, you cry. Three for 44 on seven targets. Uh, you know, it, it's not uh, Julian Edelman bad two for nine, but it's going to help you lose, and that's not good. No, and same with Emmanuel Sanders and Debo. Robert Woods and Brandon Cooks were the two duds on that um, The garbage time. So I disagree because Brandon Cooks, four for 46, I feel like that's a step in the right direction for him. Well, the eight targets, four catches, yeah, step in the right direction, not for your fantasy lineup. No, Jarvis Landry was oh, a man. huge uh, – bo both Landry, Beckham, along with Baker. I guess Baker had the two touchdowns to uh, Ricky Seals-Jones. What was that? I don't know. I was, you started I, I was it. was starting to be a seal, but I realized I don't do that. And, uh, instead, it was – Yes. That's why you stopped. That, yeah, that's why I stopped. That's Bruce. why you stopped. Well, that was the, it's like a baby seal when it's getting born. It's real quiet. Me, yeah, I think those might be. Have you ever heard my impression of like a um, like a ping pong ball? <laughs> yes, great. See, it's a very similar to a clock. I'm really good with sound effects. You're like uh, I'm you're, like Justin Watson. You're like the that sound guy from section. Police Academy who can just do yes. anything with his voice. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, Stephon Diggs, four for 76. Adam Thielen, just three for 27 on three targets. The matchup was tough. Thielen coming back. Hopefully he didn't play him. I wasn't willing to play him, but uh, you're going to have to make a decision on him next week against Green Bay, though. Are you looking at Thielen as a flex option next week, uh, next week if he's practicing in full? Uh, yeah, I mean, he'll, he'll be in consideration for a flex option. Um, yeah, he will. And if DJ Chark is out, D.D. Westbrook, only two for 14. I was not going to touch Didi with the fact that he was dealing with the injury. He had left early last week. Conley was the only kind of maybe. But, you know, if Chark is out again and they face Atlanta, are you are you done with Didi for the year? Um, I, I don't think you have to be done with Didi for the year. You wa Watch the practice reports. I mean, you know, two weeks removed from whatever w was hurting him. Yeah, obviously, he stunk this week, and, and maybe you don't want to keep rolling with that. I'm fine with that. I think there are better options, but I don't think he's just dead in the water. All right, we have another stinker for Hunter Henry. It's it's it's, an, it's been it's been a while now. So here's what's crazy in our League One, where we are, you know, going to the championship. We had Darren Waller and Hunter Henry. Yeah. And after a couple of great Hunter Henry weeks, once he got back, we knew we needed to trade one of them, and we turned Henry into Amari Cooper, and him, him plus stuff, and and it was a great trade. But we regretted it for several weeks because Hunter Henry, we said we traded the wrong tight end. Clearly, we should have traded Waller and kept Hunter Henry. Had we done that, we would be out because Darren Waller had a f another fantastic game and Hunter game. Henry had another another dud. So you, you just can't always tell. Waller, 8 for 122 on 10 targets. Hunter Henry ended up just 2 for 29. Oh, Austin Hooper, 3 for 20. Thought he saved the day with that touchdown at the end. Did you think 
that it was going to get overturned? I honestly thought it would stay a touchdown. I did too. Um, because that would have been more helpful for fantasy owners. Because it was called a touchdown on the field and he did maintain the ball, possession. The ball did not move when the ball touched the ground. I thought it would be uh, upheld as a touchdown, in which case he would have had a pretty darn good game. Yeah, still a dud, though. It's disappointing. Thought more targets than six, so not a, not a start of the week candidate, unfortunately. Touchdown didn't go his way. O.J. Howard, just uh, four for 46 on eight targets. I still willing to look at him next week because the targets are going to have to come. There's nobody left in Tampa Bay. Mike Gesicki, nothing special. Noah Fant was dealing with injury heading into this game. Missed the whole second quarter. Just two for 56. So Stinkers of the Week presented by Odor Eaters. Odor Eaters, the best in foot odor defense. I'm going to be with you all week getting you ready for those hashtag Foot Clan titles. It's been very fun hearing from you on social media. Those of you, those of you that have uh, had big years, some of which maybe you've uh, struggled in those leagues for a while. And you had a big year this year, and you're ready to go for next week. I want to say good luck to everybody who is featuring a Saint or Colts player tonight, trying to get over the hump, get into that championship game. But I think that's it, Jay. I think we're done. <sighs> it's going to be a really great week. We're going to bring a lot of hashtag Foot Clan titles out there. Get that. And yeah, and you got games, what, uh, Saturday games this week. So we have going to be pretty Saturday fun. Saturday games this yeah. week, yes. All right, uh, I want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. A couple of interesting purchases yesterday sold on auction. A Saquon Barkley signed jersey, $73. A Barry Sanders signed jersey. Oh, sorry, signed football, $99 at pristineauction.com. You can get the old school players on there as well. Pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Ballers. That's going to be it for us. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Good luck tonight. for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. All right, Foot Clan, it's time to get hygienic. I mean, it's almost 2020, and you've got the Manscapes Perfect Package 2.0, the perfect gift for the holiday season. Comes with the Lawnmower 2.0. The Crop Preserver, some boxer briefs that'll keep you feeling fresh all day. Get yourself, your dad, your brother, your friends, the best gift of all, the Manscaped Perfect Package 2.0. Our listeners will receive 20% off plus free shipping when you use the code footballers at manscaped.com. That's footballers at manscaped.com, or you can find Manscaped products in your local Target.